welcome to today's episode of Pros and Politics Podcast, where we are polished and poised for greatness and impact. My name is Kahala, and I'm your host. Well, today we are so excited because we have our very first comedian and our very first podcast host. So today we have with us the ever funny comedian Marvin Davis. <laughs> What's going on? How you doing? Thank you for hey. having me aboard. I'm so excited to be on this platform, Pearls and Politics. Hey, Marvin. How you doing? How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm just, you know, surviving, making people laugh. That's what I do. You That's know? what you do. Yes. And I love it. Yes, and I love yes, it. Yes. So we often talk <coughs> on this platform along how we met somebody, right? How mm -hmm. we met. And so I will say I met you at Lefties. Yes. Lefties Fried Rice. Yes. Off Jefferson. Yes. In the city of St. Louis. You better know it. Better know it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Best Fried Rice. Black owned. Black owned. Yes, that's how we met. I was excited. I was excited to see you come through the building. I was like, who is this walking in here? Just vibrant like that. So thank you for coming to want to support. Do your food good? It was amazing. <laughs> and I'm a, I have it every time I tape and I'm going to have it today. I know that's right. Yes, that's how we met. And um, uh, I forgot what you had. Did you? I forgot you had voodoo. I forgot what you had. I get the same thing every time. And I'm going to venture out today, though. I get the shrimp fried rice. It was shrimp. And I get the crab ragoon. Gotcha. Gotcha. And I gotcha. get the egg roll. And the egg, okay. Every okay. single time. Okay. Yeah. So that's what it was. And I just remember you were so funny. You were so pleasant. Yeah. That's... And I realized you were a comedian and we talked and I was like, you've got to come on the podcast. And I'm here now. I'm excited. You I, here. I, I couldn't sleep. I was like, what is going on? Like I act <laughs> like I'm like it was Christmas morning or something. Like I was a kid again. I'm like, I can't sleep, but I'm I love here and the I'm energy. excited. Yes. I love the energy. I love the energy. So tell us how, all about yourself and how you came into the love of comedy. <laughs> I am comedian Marvin Davis and uh, straight from St. Louis, Missouri, born and raised and um, a father of two boys. You know what I mean? And so uh, and speaking of that, I, I, I'm just I was uh, I don't know if you heard about the father support agency. Um, yes, it's 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 big. Um, um, and it's growing too, especially in St. Louis. I was nominated in 2014. I was father of the year. I went through the programs for fathers that go to the program. You get the parenting classes and stuff like this. So I was rewarded. I was father of the year. I mean, my son did the first pitch at the Cardinal game. It was dope. That is I just, dope. <laughs> it was dope. I and I just it. wanted to throw that out there because um, I just feel like that needed to be heard because it's a lot of black fathers out there that's single black men and, and you know, got their kids and stuff. So, yeah, that was dope. And um, uh, comedy. Wow, I've always been funny. A funny guy, I can yeah. tell. <laughs> yeah, I've always <laughs> it. it always been me. I I I it I always been just hilarious around family and school, uh, and drama and stuff like that, and just naturally funny. So, um, I was a rap artist. So, okay. Right. So your boy got bars. <laughs> I got bars, and I I, I knew that I, something was like. I know that if I don't make it with rapping, I still want to be able to touch the people. Mm -hmm. So I was like, my family, they support me. And all this ruck is coming out of my mouth. And I'm like, I don't even want them to hear the CD because it's too much going on. Like I'm living a certain lifestyle and I could tell it is on wax. So I'm like, uh, they support me, but my aunties and my mom them looking at me like, uh, you, uh, <laughs> and I can't, I was raised up with men, so I ain't want to be cursing in when front of them, and I didn't down. want them, huh? They was like, when we going to settle down? <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> so my family said, Marvin, we think you should do stand-up comedy. I was like, yo, y'all serious? They like, saw it. So I'm like, well, y'all serious? And one day... I walked into White Castles uh -huh. and it was a, a a guy sitting right there. And he was like, young man, I turned around. He was like, what do you do? I was like, what do you mean? He's like, are you entertaining? I'm like, I rap. He was like, he was like, you're a comedian. Go down to the house of comedy on the land and tell him I sent you. He gave me, he gave me the, the information about the land. I was like, what is this? Like he telling me to go to? I ain't never. I never seen them again. A day in my life, it was like an angel. An angel. You read my mind. It was an angel. I've never seen them a day in my life. You know how the old people sit in white cows and drink coffee. I've never seen that man again. So I went down there, did the open mic, and I was like, wow. And I told my family, I took, I, I stepped out there. So ever since then, <laughs> like I just been at it. I've been at it. So how yeah. long have you been at it? Um, 
Next week, make 14 years. Wow. Or doing stand-up comedy. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's a beautiful story. You mm-hmm. know, you might think it's funny, but I think it's beautiful because I've had experiences like that where it's like somebody says something to you or gives you some information and you turn around and they go. Mm-hmm. So for you to actually take that and do what you were supposed to do with it and now look. Right, exactly. Right, because I was like, my family just pushed this on me. Then you sitting right here and I'm like, wow. The word. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Never sent them again. So, um, yeah, and it's been it's been a journey. It's been a journey. It's been it's 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 I can't. It's a blessing because I'm using I'm being a vessel to you know. And laughter is healing. I didn't. It is. You know how many people come up to me and say, "You made my day." Mm-hmm. I needed that, and I know my job is I'm doing my job. Yeah. So is it everything that you thought it would be? Because 14 years is a journey, right? Mm-hmm. And so obviously you're way more successful now than you were 14 years ago. Yes. And like you said, it means a lot when you do something you love. And exactly. then somebody says, you know what? You bless me. Like I was really down or I was thinking about giving up. And then, you know, I ran into you. Or I came to your show and then I just laugh until my side hurt. And now I feel so much better. Is it everything that you thought it would be? It is. I know I, I I didn't I didn't see what's going on right now. I couldn't see that 14 years ago or even 10 years ago. But it's I'm reaping the benefits. I'm reaping, I'm I'm getting it. I'm getting it in. Um I got some more, I got some goals that I'm putting out there for myself that I'm trying to achieve, but hey, I'm still at it. Mm-hmm. You know, success look different for everybody. everybody. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I'm okay with I'm I'm good where I'm at. I know I'm excelling, but I don't have to be a Kevin Hart. As long as I'm Marvin Davis, I'll be able to touch the people around the world. That's all that matters. Absolutely. It is in success, as my our podcast producer tells me all the time, it's a journey, mm-hmm. not a destination. So if you keep that in mind, you'll keep running your race. Because if you feel like, oh, I feel like I should be here. Well, here is a is a point. Here is here, mm-hmm. right? So if you don't see yourself as having to be here, but you see yourself on a journey that continues until we leave here, mm-hmm. right? Then you can keep running. Because if I feel like, okay, well, I'm 45 and I should have done X, Y, Z by now, it's very defeating, right? But if you understand that, you know, you still got great years ahead of you and you got so much more to do, then you keep going on that journey. Because I'm telling you, I'm good for wanting to be. Now, I don't quit, but I'm good for wanting to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good for wanting to. Really? So, but then I, I remember my why, right? My why is my husband and my kids. My why is the destiny that I feel that God has for me. My why is, you know, being able to touch people, right? Because mm-hmm. no matter what we do. We're touching somebody. So right. whether we're practicing law, whether we're, you know, a medical doctor or a teacher or a comedian, whatever it is that you do, you're touching somebody. So you just got to always keep that that why in mind. Got you. So I love, let's go back just a little bit because I loved you talking about the Father and Sons program. Got you. We love family here at Pros mm-hmm. and Politics Podcast and we love community. So what was it about that or why did you want people to know that that program exists? You know what? It could be the energy of your podcast. That it, I didn't think about that at home. I, I'm a person that go with the flow, and I follow. I followed it, my instinct. So it just, I, I just felt like it needed to be shared because um, the topic and who I am and what I become. I didn't. I wasn't up under any stipulations, like by the courts or anything. I heard about the program, and I put myself. I always set myself up for success. I put myself in it. I was being rewarded though, because I had my son, my oldest son. I had him, and it was it was hard living with my mom and hearing her tell so cut off the lights and do all this and get that boy a bath and do all this. It was all, it was a struggle. And I was like, I, I got to, and I, but I was being rewarded. And once I got in the program, I had no idea that the, uh, the nomination and people would vote. I didn't, I, I, it was other men in it. And that first of all, signs and symbol for the conscious mind in the program, they have it by like, um, class, you know, this class one, I was born in 1981. I, I was in class 81. 
and I got it nominated. I didn't know all these people was voting for me. I'm on Channel 2 News and stuff. I'm like, what? I won. What? What happened? But I was being rewarded for what I was doing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? God was rewarding me. Absolutely. And then I'm all on the news and they dragging me here, dragging me there. And I'm all at the Cardinals game doing the first pitch. But I just thought that was important because as a black man and, and as a father, you know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. that program, I still go back and talk to the fathers and, and just pour into them and let them know it's going to be okay. It's okay. You know, you don't have to give up because you pay child support. Love on your child. It doesn't even matter. Just do what you do. So, mm -hmm. and I, I was helped in that area. So, yeah, I just think it's important for people, for men to know that and for women to know that too, because now they got, they got a platform for women inside the Father Support Agency. It's going down. Okay. It's going down. So, shouts out to them, the Father Support. Yeah, most them. Not. <laughs> I'm excited about I that. I had, to, I had to throw that because it's, 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 it's real, you know, and that helped me with my journey and it helps me with my material. It helped mold in me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah. I thought I just thought it was important. I, I probably felt like felt your energy. I probably felt like, you know, you had you was it was a connection right there. Absolutely. So, yeah, most definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. Like I said, we love family and we love um, fathers mm -hmm. here. You know, I said in a in an earlier episode, you know, about mama's note. And I'm like, no shade to the daddies. We love daddies here. OK, I was a daddy's girl. Right. Mm -hmm. And so my daughter, she, you know, started out like a mama's girl. And then now she like she she in love with her. dad, And I just love to see it because that was me mm -hmm. when I was five, me and my daddy. Right. And I think sometimes fathers are often not given the love or the attention that they deserve. Mm -hmm. um, and so many people are like, well, oh, because sometimes they're not. Well, sometimes we do have dads that aren't great dads. But there are programs like that. what you're talking about that they also understand the challenges that mm -hmm. men face in raising their children and being good fathers. And so they have somewhere where people can go. Yeah. And you are a testament yes. to what you say, the reward that comes from yeah, participating yeah, and things like that. For just being there for your child, you're going to get rewarded for being there. It's, it's challenges, but go go for it at the end of the world. Mm -hmm. You know, once I, once you look into your child's eyes, you know what you need to do. You you get that. So, you know, that that's that's where I was at. And and they were supportive and they came, they come to my shows. I still go back there and give back. And it's, I love it. I don't love, I don't. No, I don't need to be paid anything. I'm. I need to give them what you know, and give them, and let them know it's gonna be okay. And you know, you got some men that's that's suffering from different things. But once I lay something in you, you are you gonna wake up. You are gonna feel <laughs> that though, most definitely. And I get the men that, and still just mentor. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Men still call me like, "Mom, what's up? What's going on?" I'm like, "What's up, bro?" So yeah, it's important. It's important. It's it's just a big piece of my life, and it adds to my comedy as well. I can only imagine. Yeah. I can only imagine how that pulls. It does. <laughs> Some very funny stories and anecdotes yes. for your stand-up. Mm -hmm. And speaking of your stand-up, you make it look so easy. <laughs> like, I watch you and I, I follow you and I'm just like, he makes it look so easy. And like I said, things are going really well right mm -hmm. now. Um but it's not easy, right? So what are some of the challenges that you faced over the 14 years and how have you like managed to navigate through those challenges? Oh my goodness, the challenges of uh making getting myself known. Okay. Woo, I feel you. You know, I feel you. But because of my passion <laughs> and my drive, uh-huh. It it come, it comes with the territory. You have to you got to want you got to grind and you got to be you and you got to do a lot of stages for free. Uh huh. You know, uh -huh. like that's important. Like if you want people to know who you are, you will show up and say, "Hey, can I get five minutes? Mm -hmm. Can I can I get a couple minutes?" Mm -hmm. And once you do that and you bless them people, people like, "Oh no, the first who the first person uh -huh. we was here, but who was that?" So the challenges. That, that 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 that's a challenge. Overcoming it is just staying consistent, right? We had mm -hmm. that. We said that we word. Just said that, yes. Consistency is important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and putting yourself out there, investing in yourself. Uh huh. It's important. You know what I'm saying? So to overcome that, prayer, mm -hmm. meditation. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Trying to just be stay in balance and overcome it because I have to re. I just went through something where I have to reinvent myself. Uh huh. And that's material, me, who I am. That that happens. And I talk to older comedians that's been in the game longer. Me, they're like, look, bro, it, it it's real. Like you, that's that's natural for us and our feel. So I'm like, well, I feel like 
I got to redo something. He's like, yeah, you got to reinvent yourself. Yeah, that's, in, that's yeah. So, yeah. Yes. And overcoming the challenges, yeah, just by prayer and staying consistent. And so the grind is real. It is. Because I may not be a comedian, but we all want to grow and we want our platforms to grow. Um, and like you said, people knowing who you are, like starting from zero. So, right, it was zero everywhere, zero followers, and it was zero, you know, subscribers. And just to watch it. But consistency, like you said, it, that is the key to yeah. success in what you do, period, right? Because yes. If you don't consistently show up or you don't consistently put out content or you don't. So consistency, like you just said, we said earlier, is so important. But that grind, though. Oh, my goodness. You I mean, you tell me I make it look easy. I get comedians that tell me that people tell me that I'm like, you do? well, well, I, I'm natural. I'm like, I'm not I can write uh, the subject. Mm -hmm. But if I write it out. I don't, I, 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 I won't be my full self. Uh -huh. Like if I go on stage and try to say that the way I wrote it out, we know our imagination grows. So when we write, we can just, you know, if you, you're an author, if I say that like that on paper, it'd be like, nah, it was, uh, that was, but, it's okay. but I can write the subject and just go off the top because mm -hmm. the vision is in my head anyway. Right. Mm -hmm. So you got some comedians, that's writers that, 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 that only script, they're scripted. Okay. And they, that's why they like, dude, I wish I had the. I wish I had an ability to freestyle them. I'm like, well, I I wrote the subject down. It's like the middle a little bit, and then the punchline is right there in my head. So I'm just going. So yeah, it, it yeah, it's it, it can it come off a little easy. It's like watching it Floyd Mayweather or Javante Davis. They <laughs> they hit with a purpose. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I tell jokes with a purpose, and I want to deliver with a purpose. And I want to be able to touch you, touch your soul, most definitely. So I love. <laughs> I love what you just said because it's so um some things come easy some for others and some don't and so for you to because some comedians it just it just don't land right it just I'm sorry it just doesn't it just doesn't land and so that because I'm not a comedian you are educating me because I'm like okay so you're saying some people write it out. Some people just go off the cuff. And so maybe I'm more, my funny bone is tickled more by somebody who is just off the cuff. Because, <laughs> right, exactly. like I said, and it's some really big comedians, right? That I'm just like, I am so happy for their success, but they're uh -huh. just not my cup of tea. My girlfriends and I, we won't name any names, but my girlfriends and I, we were just talking about that a couple of weeks ago and somebody had a show or something and we were like, well, we'll wait on y'all to tell us whether it was good or to go back and watch it or not, because like, it's just not our cup of tea, you right, know? Exactly. So that's very interesting to know and for you to educate us on the fact that, you know, some people have different styles. I never would have known yeah, that. Yeah, we got to take that. You know, it's be people, be people to tell me, oh, Marvin, you're funny, but I want to hire him because of. I like you, but I like him better. I got to take that. I'm okay with that, though. Uh -huh. I know that stand-up comedy. I'm a comedian myself, and I only like certain type of comedians. Uh -huh. So I can just imagine the people that's in the crowd watching us, although it's a big percentage that love me, I like Absolutely. that. I try, to, I try to please. I try to be able to touch everybody. I want to be able to please. I'm a people pleaser. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm like that at lefties. I'm a people pleaser. I well... Am. And there's nothing wrong with that, right? So you're a people pleaser in a good way. So before people be like, well, because uh, of course we know people pleasing is supposed to. No, like you provide a service. Right. Right. And so you have an audience <laughs> and you want to please your audience. Exactly. So that only makes sense because if you were sitting here like, I don't care if people <laughs> think I'm funny or not, I'd be like, what are, what are you doing it for? If you so Exactly. I totally get it. So I know you mentor young men in general. Mm -hmm. Do you mentor up and coming comedians? I do. Is that like a is there like a network for that? Well, it, yeah, it is. It's it's knocking at my door more often too. And I I I can't get away from it because they see me and they like, and I just had an inbox from somebody and I'm like, who is this inboxing me? <laughs> and he was like sending this long message about how he's seen me. He's been watching me. He see my flyers and can I mentor him? So I had a conversation with him, you know, um, you got to want it. You got to want it now. You got to, Hey, you uh -huh. got to want it. 
And it's not for the faint of heart. <laughs> it's not. And they want to know how to structure a joke or how to, like the comedy Bible came up. I'm like, well, bro, I had the comedy Bible. You can read it. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Take that in. But don't take away from yourself. And when I said that, he said it. He was like, well, I've been reading it, but I feel like it's taken away from me. I said, yeah. See? You got to read it for what it is and take what you need out of it. Don't Chew the meat, spit out the bones. There you go. There you go. So, yeah, I do mentor. I do. Um, I've had people to want to pay me for doing it. And I'm like, do I take this? I, I I mean, I'm asking myself that because it's knocking at my door now. You know what I'm like? Am I supposed to be charging for this? And I had to ask myself that. And I had comments be like, look, can I cash up you? and Or can I pay you for your service? I'm like, yeah, that's cool, bro. But I ain't giving you no fee. Just whatever you send over is fine. Uh -huh. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, That's awesome. So, we, you are, as we stated, our first podcast host. So, tell us all about your new podcast. <laughs> That's coming out. Oh my goodness. Um, we got STL one mic. It's gonna be dope. Dope. Yes, dope. yes, yes, yes. Dope. Hosted by the one and only comedian Marvin Davis. Um, we're gonna have we got different artists that's gonna come up, comedians that's um been in the game longer than me, from the ones, the OGs to the era I'm in and to the the young ones. So, and we got some dope poets that's gonna come aboard too. So most definitely this podcast is gonna go through the roof. Like I, I'm I through the roof. I, I didn't see myself doing this mm -hmm. and it's here. I, I can't question no. some things. You know, like mm -hmm. with stand-up comedy, I'm running my own company, um, Real Love Comedy. Tell us all about that. Yes. Yes. I didn't see that. Um, I'm on that platform. I'm booking in comedians, local and international comedians. Um, I'm spending my own money. I have to do my own contracts. So, yes, that, that platform is for that. And when I mentor the other comedians, I let them know, hey, I got a platform. If you need to get comfortable, most definitely come aboard. I won't make you uncomfortable. I'll get I'll get you to the water now. You got to drink. That's it. So with that, yeah, Real Love. And I've been, it's LLC. I've been running it for almost the last 10 years, as coming up on a decade. Wow. That I've been doing my thing. And I'm bringing in artists from out of town and and uh, doing good business. And I'm tapping into my business a little bit. I'm taking the last three to four years. I've been taking it serious of mm -hmm. keeping con keeping uh, track of all my money and all that. So mm -hmm. it's work. It's it's it is yeah, work. it's work. Yeah, entrepreneurship, yeah. being in business for yourself. It is absolutely work. Yeah, and I'm loving it. Yeah, I love what I do. So. Yes. Yeah, and you can tell it just radiates off of you. Mm -hmm. I mean, your smile, your, like you said, your energy, like it, you have big energy. I do. And I cannot wait to come to your show. <laughs> so when you're doing your show, so where are you having, where, where are your venues right now? Um, Right now I'm in Midtown, St. Louis, right there by the Fox. Okay. The universe has put me right there. Um, I look at the Fox and I and I say, look, I'm gonna be in there one day. And absolutely, uh, yeah, most let's definitely. just go ahead and put that out there. Yeah, Speak yeah. and see. Yes, yes, absolutely. yes. Absolutely. So I'm in Arts District. Okay. Um, if you know, are you familiar with the Fox? I am. And that's that midtown right there. I stay in an artist's loft, and that's Arts District. So okay. I'm around all this energy. I'm around all the theaters that I rent out. You know, mm -hmm. and I and I put on shows in because I believe that when you when you on the platform, you book people, you want them in a good location. Mm -hmm. People want it. People love. And I got my following is study growing. People, it's a bar is OK, but no, people want to come where they're comfortable with, where mm -hmm. they call is going to be OK. And it's, you know, it's nice. So, yeah, that's 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 what's going on right there. Yeah. And I love the quality. So you're like, look, this is nice. This is OK. But I'm trying to get to a different level yes. of what I'm doing. And here we go again with pleasing your audience. Yes. You know people want to dress up, put on something nice, get their bag, come on out and laugh and have a good time <laughs> yes. in a safe space. I yes. don't want to worry about if I got to tuck my purse underneath my yeah. feet and do all that other kind of stuff to go yeah. out and have a good time. Yeah. So that talks about, that speaks to your business acumen mm -hmm. and what your business Thank model you. is. Thank and you. And it's, it's only up from here. Thank you. I appreciate that because people be like, oh, ain't getting boozy. I'm like, look here, man. Miss me, please. Bye-bye. Uh, Thank you. Thank Bye -bye. you. Like people don't, uh, especially, and you are into politics. Mm -hmm. When I'm dealing with politicians, 
and people coming out to support me. Uh -huh. People are watching me. Uh -huh. I've had, I have investors that come and I meet with them. People like, hey, can I invest this? And I'm like, it. you know, so I'm, I, I don't. I don't jump to everything. So I'm more mm -hmm. like, let me think about it. That sound nice. You talking about th throwing uh, 50 or 60,000 my way, but hold up, brother. I don't know what's going to come behind this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Look here, I got to protect myself because I have a discernment spirit. So just because you throw the numbers at me and to all the up and coming artists, please be mindful of that. Don't, all money and good money. All money and good money. Just because they all got it and they want to don't take that because you probably can't, that's probably not for you to handle. Mm -hmm. So it's a good thing, you know, that people are watching me. People watch. So I want to, I want people to be in a safe environment environment yes. when they come and they be like, you know what, Marvin, we coming back to your show. And I book funny people. I make sure I have to scout, I have to leave the house and I pay attention to the up and coming comedians. I sit and I watch. So I got a lot, I got a lot I got going on. You, do? you know, it, I just can't sit on the couch because what I'm doing, I have to watch the up and coming comedians and watch the circuit and see what's going on because that is my competition. Absolutely. <laughs> I don't care if they want you in the game. Like, there's some funny cats out there in St. Louis and around the world. So, yeah, most definitely. I'm loving it. Well, I'm excited. Thank you. And so we are excited. Mm -hmm. Okay. So tell us how we can follow you. Oh, yeah, most definitely. On Facebook, you can follow me at um, Marvin Davis. Uh, go add me. It's my uh, my business page. And uh, Instagram. Make sure you follow please, him. Please, 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 family. Gentlemen. Please. Mm -hmm. Marvin Davis on Facebook. I have on a white t-shirt with my lips twisted like, mm -hmm, yeah, right. <laughs> so, yes. And on, on Instagram, it's Mitchie Rook, Marvin Davis. It's Mitchie Rook. That's M-I-T-C-H-A-R-U-K on Instagram. So, yes, that's what you can follow me. And you can follow me down grand, too, when I leave here, because I got, I got I need some gas in my car. But, yeah, most definitely, y'all. It's been a beautiful um, day here at Pearls and Politics Podcast. I love the platform. I, I hope to come back sometime. Absolutely. See, you beat me to it. You beat me to it, because I was going to say, you're going to come back. Yes. And I'm going to be so happy when you come back, because... You got so much going on and then you have to share what you've been doing and then you have to share what you're going to do. So how, when's your next show? So we can go. Okay. My next, my production, my real love comedy production is September the 9th. It's going to be at the Intimate Artist Lounge. It's an art gallery in Midtown, what I just got done talking art about. Gallery. Yes. Okay. It's an art gallery and it's only, uh, it's intimate on purpose. Only 60 seats. And I think I'm, I think I have for those to sold and people are reserving. So most definitely September the 9th, you know, you want to come to a real love comedy production. Um, I have uh, two local artists that's traveling and doing their thing. Comedian Precious J and comedian uh, Jarea uh, Cooper. Funny to the bone. And I'm hosting comedian Marvin Davis. Most definitely it's going to be dope. OK. And so last but certainly not least. When is that podcast dropping, sir? STL One Mike will be dropping the first Saturday in September. So y'all better get ready. It's gonna go down. I already got I already got my, my guests coming on board. It's gonna be nice, y'all. So please tune in to that. I'm excited about that. There's something else in my life that this is this is a lot of just being added. So STL One September. Mike, the first Saturday in September. And we already know that it's with SDL Podcast Studio. Yes. So we already know it's going to be dope from production to audio to everything. Yes. And we know that it's going to be on every platform. Yes. So whether you Spotify, Apple, Google, whatever it is, make sure you go. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you get all of the weekly downloads on his audio. And then you make sure you go to his YouTube channel and subscribe to his YouTube channel and watch on YouTube. Because we support here at Pros and Politics Podcast. <laughs> no, we don't play right. them games. Yes. So thank you so much. No, for thank you for on. having me. It's an honor. Thank you. I appreciate it. I really appreciate you taking the time because you were so busy. <laughs> and I just thank you so much for coming on. And I, I can't wait for you to come back. Thank you so much. And thank you for tuning in today to Pros and Politics Podcast, where we are polished and poised for greatness and impact. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Please join us again next week. And in the meantime, please like, love, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.